It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance program, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Candace Tal is the founder and chief executive officer of Infortal Worldwide and one of the top experts around on investigative due diligence. In an interview, I asked Tal about the use of an artificial intelligence in investigative due diligence and specifically how AI has led innovation in investigative due diligence. First, let's review the levels of due diligence. There are three levels of due diligence. Level one is the most basic level, which looks at only the global watch list for sanctions, politically exposed persons, anti-terrorist list, anti-money laundering list, and similar government-produced lists. Level 1 generally provides a summary of the beneficial owners of a company, its corporate structure, and perhaps some financial information in the global watch list. Many companies use this as their primary tool for risk ranking. A Level 2 due diligence investigation is an intermediate between Levels 1 and 3. Level 2 takes a deeper dive, looking at every aspect of public records information in addition to areas which are not necessarily in the public record. It encompasses items like a deeper dive of executive backgrounds. Finally is level three, which is also called a deep dive in due diligence investigation. This level works not only to identify bad people or bad actors, but also puts patterns of behavior which might tend to indicate a propensity for circumvention of internal control or stepping over or even getting too close to the ethical line that indicates behavior may turn criminal or turn in a direction which could hurt your business reputation going forward. There are <clears throat> behavioral issues which can be discovered through level three due diligence. It can be through online searching of media, including newspapers, publications, and digital media. A wide variety of information can come up in behavioral assessments in terms of what is the background of the executive or how they behaved in the past. Additionally, there may be information available in a country which may not reach the rest of the press. You may find there are local issues that are well-documented. Sometimes you can only find information through local language searches online, and sometimes you need to do in-country searches. Unfortunately, most CCOs are working with limited information with their due diligence programs or due diligence providers. This means that you do not have enough information to input into your risk assessment. A company performing or having performed for them only a level one due diligence may well only be uncovering up to 1% of the adverse information or raising appropriate red flags. In high-risk jurisdiction, even if a company is not receiving up to 35% of the information, they be really operating behind the eight ball. Moreover, relying on computer searches raises an amount of concerns for other reasons. These include both shell companies and front offices. There are still situations that without physical drive by of third-party facilities, there may be simply a local post box. The problem of shell companies is far beyond the initial dump of information past the Panama and Paradise Papers. Even with a real physical address, if your third party shares an address of a flat in London that also houses some 1,500 additional corporations, this is a serious red flag that you may be dealing with a shell company. <clears throat> that in and of itself, if not cleared, could lead to serious legal violations and a significant reputational hit to your organization. The vast majority of FCPA enforcement actions over the past 10 years have involved some form of inadequate, insufficient, or total lack of due diligence. How can a company perform due diligence without breaking the bank? 
Most companies perform level one due diligence, which of course provides low, limited information. And their companies find less than 1%, which is out there. When you couple that with a re- realization that 90% of FCPA enforcement actions are against companies who engaged third party or third party vendors, it leads you to wonder about the level and quality of the due diligence. Another key feature of almost all FCPA enforcement actions is that companies companies had a check-the-box compliance program. This implication is critical in the area of due diligence. To increase the information about the troubling 1%, you need to start looking at incorporating deep media searches into your due diligence. Deep media typically looks at aggregating data from companies that amass millions and millions of digitized records, journals, newspaper articles, etc. Now overlay the global watch list with some basic corporate financial information, and you might be able to move to 1% up to 5% of the issues that exist among parties. This has led uh, Candace Tao to believe that AI will be a game changer in compliance. Massive data sets require some type of AI to sort through and analyze this information. This is particularly important for internal controls and accounting books and records to identify massive frauds. This is yet another area which is still developing as an innovation in compliance. In the next few years, there will need still be the need for investigative uh, traditional approaches of boots on the ground, but with artificial uh, te- intelligence will help you if you have limited ability to do this. Looking down the road into the veiled land of the future, continued innovation facilitating investigative due diligence will move forward. The bottom line is that some of these investigative techniques will continue and needed to be going forward. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one, AI will change the face of due diligence. Number two, AI will facilitate data aggregation and due diligence investigations. And number three, which is, of course, always remember the human element, and there must be human oversight and human interpretation of the data generated by AI. I hope you will enjoy the entire month on innovation and compliance in this month's offering of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. If I could ask you to do so, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation in compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 days to a more effective compliance program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.